Good morning. So I finally got the bobcat or the little bobcat thing done. Um, cleaned out the carburetor. I put in a new muffler. Um, I don't have the guards back on this front, the hood, I guess you call it. But um, changed the oil in the, in the motor and uh, I've dumped the tanks. I put all ethanol free gas in there and everything. Now, on one thing I did that was kind of a uh, foolish error, um, I had to work on the exhaust. I had the bucket hoisted up here and tied off with the, with my, uh, you know, the lift, the hoist for safety. Well, and then I filled my hydraulic fluid and, you know, just a real dumb thing to do. I filled it all the way to the height it was supposed to be. But then when you let the bucket down, then it overfilled and it spilled all over. I was lucky it didn't blow a seal somewhere. Instead, it just came out the vent. But I've got hydraulic fluid all over the floor and everything. So if you're ever working on something like that, the access to the filling port is easier with the bucket, with the boom up. It's not impossible to get to. Um, so, I'm probably not the first person to do it, but uh, anyway. Okay, now on this machine, what is it good for? First of all, if you can get them, see how the sprocket sits up higher and the tanks, the tracks are triangulated? The way I understand it is on the dingoes or boxers or any of the small uh, compact uh, stand, stand on uh, little loaders, the problem with them, if they have parallel tracks, then the drive motor is so close to the ground that they wear out the sand, blows out the seals and stuff. Then you have drive motor issues. So that's why I tried to find one with the high drive. I call it high drive because the drive is higher than, than the bogies. And that being said, I, I tried to get the one that I thought would be best for for uh, durability and longevity but now that i got it there's some things i want to share and that is what are these machines good for well first of all they're slow they're like because i think it's because they're stand on or maybe because this is an older machine um three mile an hour or something i don't know and then there's a high speed but the high speed you can't grade or anything with it it's just strictly for transport um and i've tried the motor won't pull it. Now I do got a 30 horse I thought about putting on there. But well, at some point you end up overdriving your hydraulic system. So there's kind of a balance there. Right now it's got a 22 horsepower Predator motor on there. But where this machine shines is, say you want to lift up a, I got mower decks up here on the hill. Say I want to move a mower deck or something. If I get my forks on, put the forks on there then it's good. For tight spots, it's good. If you wanted to do some rock in a landscape bed, it's good because it's light. And if you're gentle, you can keep from tearing up with the tracks. Now, say you're going out on a bobcat job and you don't want it to, uh, you're missing an attachment. So, but the bobcat's in the dump trailer and you know how hard it is to drag ramps on a dump trailer and get the bobcat out. Well, say if you have this, then you could go and throw the the attachment that you need for that job up on it without unloading your bobcat to get it. You see what I'm saying? Um, there's a, there's a, just a bunch of places where something like this comes in handy. But if it was my only machine, I would think I'd be hurting because I just don't like slow. I can't stand slow um, on my mowers or anything. I run Super Z's or 13 mile an hour or whatever. I get hyperdrives if I had a better chassis. The, if the chassis wasn't so stretched out, I'd bump up the hyperdrives. I'm, I'm all about speed and uh, agility and dexterity and finesse. And, you know, I, I can't stand to sit on this and it takes me two minutes to go from here to the top of the hill. You know what I mean? If I can do it faster with myself in a wheelbarrow, then what's the point? is my feeling but you know like i said every machine has its place and if you think you can get one of these and do everything you can with the bobcat not, it ain't gonna happen because you know what i'm doing with my bobcat is 
grabbing hold of big trees with the with the tree grabber and yanking back and forth and there's stuff falling on the cab and tree branches whipping back at you and there's no alternative for having an enclosed cab now mine's just mine's not got the glass or anything but the protection you get from that the ability to do so much more with uh, the regular size skid steer and the t190 is not a very big machine either it's seven thousand pounds i think 60 three horsepower turbocharged Kubota. But anyway, this this machine has its purposes and for those it is good. So let me get fired up here and see if there's gonna be more hydraulic fluid come out on it. Hang on. It's draining, uh, it's leaking out hydraulic fluid again, so I'm going to have to open that up and get the excess drained out. You can see it's pouring out right there off the vent cap. So, I'll have to get that fixed. Before I blow out a seal. And also, see it's leaking down there by the love joy coupling on the motor and pump connection, so... I don't want to leave that like that. All right, let me get this fixed up. We'll talk to you later. fooling around with it trying to get any excess oil to leak out before I go to a customer's job on it uh, yeah as you can tell it's, it's slow and uh, if uh, you try to run it in high gear it can't really do much 
except move itself. And then it's pretty finicky about that. All right, I'm going to get on some work and catch you later.